So I wanted to do a really quick video about the recent shoot that I did with one of my closest friends, Lucy Buttons. We did it! But crack a dunk. We beat everyone else though. Look. She is a burlesque performer and producer, and she wanted to shoot at the Brooklyn Bridge to try to catch the sunrise. Though the weather uh, is always finicky and we didn't really get like a real sunrise shoot, our like, you know, backup slash main shoot was just doing an evening shoot in the iconic Brooklyn Bridge, which meant us waking at the buck crack of dawn. It's the buck crack of dawn there. <laughs> And in this video, I'm just gonna show you guys how I set up the shoot, how I shot the three layouts that we did, and the gear that I brought. So, um, here we go. Firstly, uh, on the side, you'll see kind of the three main uh, gear setups that I've been using recently. I have the everyday carry Peter McKinnon camera backpack. During photo shoots, I try to have a minimal gear. So if it's like a, a pro shoot, this is what I'll bring. And this is what I brought to our Brooklyn Bridge shoot. It housed my main camera of choice when doing shoots this time. Just photography is the R6 with the 28 to 70 R, so the F2 R. I also have the R5 and the R7, but I kind of default to the R6 because I don't need that much megapixels. Like the R6 has fewer megapixels compared to the R5. And sometimes I feel the more megapixels, the bigger the file. It just takes a little bit longer to edit. Uh, you don't need that much information in a shot the way that I use it. Like we just use it for Instagram posts, uh, very small posters. So I default to the R6. I like the convenience or I've been defaulting to the uh, 28 to 70 more and more despite it being Look how big this is. This is ginormous, just like as big as my head. It's fairly heavy, but the convenience of having kind of a wide aperture, this just gives me a lot of versatility. And when you're in, in the Brooklyn Bridge, you want to see that length, but you also want to see the width of the bridge. You want to see the cables on the side. So I found myself shooting a lot at 70, but a little bit around 50 as well so that I can get that uh, wide or mid-wide angle look on it and still use a very, very low aperture because not only was I shooting at night, but on, on my end, I, I always like shooting with a blurry background. So most of my lens when I do shoot, it's def it defaults to the widest aperture that I can use. <laughs> the other main lens that I used on this particular shoot, but most of the shoots that I do as well, is the 50 1.2. It's, you know, a good enough portrait lens, a good enough half body lens as well. And if you can step back, having shallow depth of field, full body shot looks really good. So actually in this shoot, most of the edited shots that I'll be sharing in this video, I kind of used the 50 1.2. Oh, I like that. Break. 
Since we were shooting at night, I needed to assist putting in fill on our subject. I try to keep my shoots very gorilla, very simple. So I have my my Flashpoint slash Godox XR2 for, for the Canon system as one of the strobes or the flash guns that I used. I have the R2 Pro uh, Trigger C for, for Canon to trigger this um, off shoe or off camera. So this is kind of like my main fill slash light source if I am shooting at an angle where the subject's face in front is a little bit dark or I have a little backlight from the bridge because there's plenty of poles there. Chin up. If you're doing shoots like this and you want to add a little fill, having like a remotely triggered flash gun is, is going to be uh, very, very useful for your particular shoot. The other thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is one of my favorite equipment in terms of uh, light modifiers, particularly when I'm shooting outdoors, but sometimes indoors as well, if I don't need a lot of light and I'm doing like a, a, a semi shorter shot. I have the Triopo light modifier it is a foldable octobox that is fairly small uh, i got the 65 centimeter version with the flash bracket you can get a, a bowens mount version of this as well it's only like 65 dollars i got this on sale i think for around 50 on Amazon, you can find it. And the good thing about this is it collapses, right? Because it collapses, it's very easy to open up and set up, put it on a monopod or a tripod so that you can use as, as a, uh, a light source uh, off camera, off a little bit to the side, off up top, if depending on what shoot that you want. I really like this because like it you know, automatically comes with the flash bracket right here. You can just put either the AD200 or the 8200, which is a more square flash gun, and this XR2, which is like a traditional round flash gun as well. So like most flash guns get fit in here as well. You can screw that in, uh, put it in a stand. I actually use like a generic Amazon stand that you can buy for like $19.95. I'm shooting wide open. I just need a little bit of assistance so that not a lot of shadows fall in the subject's face. And what I like about this is once you install, or at least how I use it is, once I install the diffuser, because you can shoot this without the diffuser as well, like there's a silver mount on the inside, as you can see, and then you can have like, you can have it single or double diffuse depending on how you shoot it. I have this particular setup double diffuse because I want to do a little bit more of like a natural ambient lighting situation and I'm using primes with very, very low aperture. For me, once I have the diffusers on there, I don't even take them off. I just keep them on, strap them in, and you know pack it away put it in my closet and i'm done and that's and then i open it up and run it on my shoot the shots that we tried to do was yeah you know i'll, I'll have this set up 45 degree angle from the model uh, if it's backlit you know maybe 10 15 feet away because i want it large and soft to illuminate you know the sides of the face that i want to be highlighted you can just use your stand prop it up with your uh, backpack or your luggage or some sandbags if you want. Again, we were shooting guerrilla style. For this particular shoot, we're able to find um, you know an assistant to help us out carry this light around. So just give it to a person and I angle them on. set up behind the scenes for this particular shoot. The Brooklyn Bridge is always packed. The way that you can shoot at iconic places is, you know, just going on really, really odd hours. That's why we shot even before dawn, even before the butt crack of dawn. We started shooting at 3.30 in the morning so that the bridge will be fairly empty because that's, you know, what makes shooting at a familiar place more professional is like you don't have people standing around in the back where you don't have to edit them out as 5.30 hit. 
all the people that are doing engagement shoots, all the people that are doing wedding shoots are already there. So that's the reason why, um, you know, we shot at 3.30 in the morning. That's how we shot Lucy Button's Brooklyn Bridge shoot. Thank you guys for watching. I'll do more of these videos so that I can share a little bit more of my process. Uh, you guys can learn from the little that I know, I can learn from you guys. So if you have additional questions that are more specific to how I set up or how I shot this shoot or any other shoots, feel free to drop a comment. And you know, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.